So this will be a mashup video with a few different things of stuff that are quick fixes or doesn't really fit making a dedicated video out of. I've had issues out here with uh, greasing the uh, linkage down to the grapple mm. on the forwarder and it's been hard to get the, the uh, grease nozzle to get uh, stuck on there even using that 90 degree one and it turned out the grease nozzle was kind of loose and uh, when tightening that up it was impossible to get the grease nozzle on there because the bolt holding the pin for the linkage was too long so it was removed and cut away the thread uh, uh, or two and uh, then all of a sudden things are working on the other side there is not the same problem and the uh, Grease fittings, grease circs are kind of in different angles. I think something has been repaired here at some point, and maybe they had to drill a new hole for for the grease, and something was changed. It doesn't really matter. It works fine right now, at least. So like quick, easy hole. fix. I've had issues with the forwarder that it restarts the program all the time but only when you feed it with power from this inverter if you pull out the power everything works fine so i suspect the inverter or the power supply for the computer uh, had set up to uh, measure some voltages here i don't have an oscilloscope so i can't see what the curves look if there there is a bad uh, sine wave but it's been working fine and it seems to deliver 240 volts at least so uh, uh, it's not totally dead and it still charges the computer fine but if you have it running and the computer is running, it just restarts. And if you do uh, give it the uh, uh, start, uh, the fan looks have started sounding really bad in it when you uh, withdraw some load from it. Here I had a light I connected to just drive. We also pulled out when we had it close to the garage a feed, feed line that actually we had so much extension cable that we had a kind of low voltage uh, but the computer still worked fine with, with the power uh, connected uh, so I highly suspect this inverter that I've contacted the seller and got to do a warranty claim on it so and hopefully get a new one that works. Next on the to-do list was moving a little cabin on wheels my dad built many years ago. It should have been done before last summer but never got around to it. I've been wanting to move that closer to where I uh, I'm working in the summers with the brush cutter even if I didn't have time for much of that last summer because of the bark beetles I hope it will be less of them this summer but who knows let's hope for a very, very cold and wet summer in the north part of Sweden zero sun uh, cloudy rainy every day should give me more time to mess with the uh, brush cutter rather than uh, chase bark beetles. At least locally over my property. Well, so uh, some of the snow was removed. It could it should have been done a little sooner during the winter when there was less snow, but never got around to it then. But with the new old wheel loader, clearing snow is. Uh, kind of fun <laughs> compared to the old uh, tractor, the old John Deere. So here is the little cabin we are gonna move and it's been having a uh, last few years a very slow leak on one of the wheels. Uh, this summer I was over there pumping it up bringing that little fire extinguishers, extinguishers uh, tank with me a bunch of times. Now we had the small compressor with us and uh, and also that uh, tank 
so it was enough to get uh, air in there to move it but we decided to try and replace the hose in it to see if because the other side seems uh, almost dead solid doesn't lose any air whatsoever uh, it was loosened before it was jacked up then it was we left uh, the jack here but uh, we put a few wooden pieces under as a safety also it has a split rim design but the tire has probably been on there for 40 years maybe I don't know how old it is uh, but it's plenty old because it was used to hold timber uh, behind the, the bus, Buster 400 the old tractor in the old days uh, we use some C clamps to force the rubber down and to get it to get it loosened from the split rim design. It has a heavy duty uh, inner liner protector for for the hose. You don't see things that beefy normally these days. Uh, some talcum powder, uh, they say it should help with lubing the, the hose so it can kind of slip into position against the tire better. I'm not sure how well it works, I've installed plenty of hoses without it but it's cheap and I don't think it can hurt so everything was pushed in there in place little bit of struggling getting that second half of the split rim in place uh, the valve from the hose was a little tricky getting it to poke out correctly then the split rim was bolted back up and pumped back up and it seems to hold air for the first few days but so did it when it was on the, the, the cabin trailer it took months for it to really leak so Time will tell if this was a success. A small diesel leak on the wheel loader, I think it was from when the pump was out. I had loosened all these pipes, tightened it up and all was well. I think there's still a tiny tiny leak on the return hoses, but it's so small I'm not gonna bother right now. We'll check the valves at some point I think on this and <coughs> get closer to the problem. Tried starting up the old uh, truck lorry Volvo F86 uh, my dad had started it earlier because we had forgotten he didn't get the brake pressure up and we were a little worried something had broken because we had forgotten to add uh, like anti-freeze fluid to the brake system because modern trucks with the air brakes have a dryer system all trucks don't they add some anti-freeze I think it's just some kind of alcohol that uh, should uh, attract moisture and blow it out in the air, into the air tank and you drain it out. I'm not sure how it works. I always get some gunk draining the air tank out of it, but it could be the compressor leaking or catching some oil also. So while it was running we fed uh, some of that uh, dryer fluid anti freeze into the brake system and uh, let it run for a while longer after that was added. Driver comfort is a little bit different in a truck from 74 but so is a car from 74 compared to a modern. Things have changed but these old machines without all the computers and gizmos will probably be easier to keep running for a long time than the modern nice machines. The radio in the wheel loader has not been working very well. This is not the only problem, but I noticed earlier that the an antenna cable going to the back was broken. I didn't bother because I think it's a said some CB radio or uh, uh, extra radio system in it at some point and there seemed to be some antenna on the roof also and I didn't know which one was going where but it did not get any radio channels in so I tried splicing and, and reconnecting this antenna cable and uh, it's not correct I know but at least the radio reception is a little better it's still some issue with some bad sounds in the radio and the display is kind of dead so we'll see if I 
look at replacing it at some point I need to find the tools to get it out because I don't have the correct tools to be able to pull it out uh, <coughs> without force next on the trouble list is the old snowmobile it's uh, running quite well but it's running the super well but good enough to move your ass from point A to point B the problem it's left us stranded two times uh, no spark so we suspected something electrical and the CDI box has a crack at the bottom it does not seem uncommon after some googling uh, we took it in and uh, let it dry for a few days above the wood stove uh, also notice the hose crack that goes from the crankcase uh, up to the fuel pump because it's a vacuum operated fuel pump I have no clue how that really operates uh, but it's been running fi fine but the hose was almost cut all the way off and uh, I th maybe it allows fuel to just pass through and just operates and helps pump when level is below carb or f well I replaced it at least uh, we filled uh, we had it out and test fired and see that it started nicely after we had dried out the CDI and then we added some silicone built to where the cables go in and over the crack some soapy water on your finger and you can fix that silicone nice Snow has started to melt, uh, spring is around the corner and uh, snow has fallen off the roofs. That's usually a sign that uh, it's good to t take some of the so it away from some of the buildings I care for most. I started the small excavator, it needed a little coolant. It has a tiny coolant leak that I haven't bothered. It's still too small to really put a lot of energy into it. I just fill a liter every now and then. It fired up nicely, it had, had the charger on it, that rotor tilt extension attachment was added to it. And it was brought down to the house. It was actually quite little snow this year, so... But it was quite hard back there. But... Uh, not really a trouble getting a little stuck in the bucket just taking the bulk away the last little bit closest to the wall itself will be taken away by hand it's just to allow the timber to dry out faster because it gets a little moist and if you allow any rain or so on to drip down it can soak in and make the timber quite wet so I think it's worth it to remove this in the spring it helps isolate in the winter also and when it's cold enough uh, uh, I don't think the house leaks enough to really melt a lot of it and uh, then the little garage that we overhauled the other year this one will be maintained in this way in the future also I hope take away most of the snow in the spring I did take all three south side south side has the open area under it so and it's kind of sloping down there so not any snow up against the timber on the south side of the building here is the north side and then the back side east side was also snow removed just the uh, <coughs> north side that requires it it kind of slopes away from the building enough to not really have a lot of snow up against it on the other sides also had a couple of burls taken care of uh, knoser vrilar uh, it's birch tree björk 
I have a friend that uh, buys them from me and has plans to make some bowls or so on if they are good quality so and I get better pay than just putting in them in the pulp pile or making firewood out of them so I'm happy to do that. I cut away some of the excess that had been left there that's made it easier to handle them and take them out from the wood. I brought out a little wheeled cart to uh, have this to help move them around but one tire was flat and the hose was bad. Uh, it had been replaced recently but all we could source then was a tiny bit too small and modern hoses do not like that. They are butyl and that does not uh, go well if you overstretch it, it rips. So we loaded by hand and we later replaced the hose but that broke right away even if it's a correct size so I'm not sure what's up with that. Really annoying. Time to take the tracks off the forwarder because during the summer it usually gets to help out a little around the house and the sawmill so you don't want the tracks when you do any of that when it moves near the house. So the rear they are kind of loose enough that the uh, little uh, luggage uh, or ratchet strap you tighten them up enough and you can remove the, the locks for it and uh, take them off. The front is a little bit tighter. One side we had to bring out that tool I've showed in previous videos my dad had made but even if it's not really easy to work with. It uh, was built for almost free and uh, on the other side we managed to just use a ratchet strap and pull the locks against each other and then with some hammering get them to come undone so this side was going easier and here it's helping out a little around the house. Uh, we are feeding in a glue lamb beam to do some reinforcements in the house. Turned down the crane to be super super slow and it was actually a bit too slow but the computer had run out of uh, power by this time so I had no real options to easily change anything so we still did the job that we had to do with it. So I'm just leaving you with another 3-4 minutes of us really slowly getting this beam into the house. Uh, as we got it up there we had the chain locks and started pulling it further in until we had it in location. So that's it for now. Hope everyone is having a good time and that the spring is coming quickly. Take care, have fun.